Now, how does tautomerization work mechanistically? Well, first, let me show you what doesn't happen. I'm going to draw it and then I'm going to erase it because it's what doesn't happen. One thing we might think to do if we look at the structures of, say, a general keto form and a general enol form is simply to transfer a proton from the alpha carbon to the carbonyl oxygen. And we could even do this in a single elementary step through some curved arrow gymnastics, right? Protonate here. Actually, you know what? Let's use the CO double bond. Save us a step. Use the CO double bond to protonate oxygen. And then at the same time, kick the CH electrons into a double bond. So this is a fully intramolecular proton transfer that interconverts the keto and enol forms, converts the keto to the enol form directly. This won't work because of the four-membered ring nature of the transition state and the fact that orbital overlap just doesn't work that way. The pi electrons cannot overlap with the CH sigma antibonding orbital in the way required to make this electron flow work physically. So this doesn't work. Instead of that direct unimolecular process, we generally have to involve either an acid or a base catalyst in tautomerization. And this has been shown empirically under conditions when we rigorously exclude acid or base, tautomerization slows down dramatically. So an acid or base catalyst is generally required. But even tiny amounts of acid and base get the job done. So for example, the 10 to the negative 7 mole per liter of hydronium in water is, is enough to make tautomerization relatively rapid. So let's look at acid and base catalysis. This is just really another opportunity to flex our muscles in developing an understanding of catalytic mechanisms. An acid catalyst is something like H3O+. Let's imagine that the reaction is happening in aqueous solution and we've introduced maybe one drop of a strong acid, so we have an acid catalyst in there. The purpose in life of an acid catalyst is to protonate basic groups within the substrate and in this case the ultimate acceptor of electrons when we deprotonate the alpha position is going to be the carbonyl oxygen. And so protonating that carbonyl oxygen is going to facilitate tautomerization, as we'll see in a second. Proton on the carbonyl substrate happens first, as it does in all acid-catalyzed mechanisms. And the intermediate we have is the conjugate acid or protonated form of the carbonyl group, the protonated keto form, we might say using the language of tautomers. At the same time, we generated the conjugate base of the catalyst, in this case, water. And water is now perfectly poised to remove the proton from the alpha position. So notice, in the acid-catalyzed mechanism, and in fact, the same is gonna be true in the base-catalyzed mechanism, a proton transfer that we tried to do in one step really requires two steps to do. First, a proton goes on from the acid catalyst, in this case, and then a proton comes off as a result of deprotonation by the basic catalyst. This second step does two things. It generates the enol tautomer. And I really haven't mentioned this yet, but the trans form of the enol tautomer tends to be favored for the same reason that a trans alkene is generally favored over a cis alkene, just steric reasons. And this also regenerates the catalyst, regenerates H3O plus. And as we've seen in numerous examples already, H3O plus can return, engage with another molecule of substrate, restart the catalytic cycle. Under basic catalytic conditions, in fact, the mechanism still involves two proton transfers. But now, rather than doing a protonation of the substrate first, we deprotonate first. So let's imagine we're, again, in aqueous conditions, and we add, say, one drop of a strong base, like sodium hydroxide solution or something like this, to the reaction mixture or to the substrate in solution. The first step is deprotonation of the alpha position. So one of the two proton transfers we need, this deprotonation, happens in the first step of the base catalyzed mechanism. This produces an intermediate that we've seen before. The intermediate has negative charge at the alpha carbon adjacent to a carbonyl group. We can draw a resonance form of this intermediate with negative charge on the carbonyl oxygen and a double bond between the carbonyl carbon and the alpha carbon. This is an enolate intermediate that we've generated. At the same time, we also generated the conjugate acid of the catalyst here, neutral water. And the second proton transfer step we need is going to involve that conjugate acid acting as an acid and protonating the carbonyl oxygen. Notice that this is the other proton transfer that we need. And now it's going to be facilitated by the fact that we're dealing with an enolate. So I could use this bottom resonance form to do it directly, but just to save a little bit of space, 
I'm going to use the top resonance form and draw an additional curved arrow to show protonation of the carbonyl oxygen and regeneration of the catalyst. So either acidic or basic conditions can catalyze tautomerization. And this tends to be very, very rapid. And so really, both of these arrows should be drawn as reversible arrows going back and forth since these equilibria are established very rapidly. And of course, in the case of a general, simple ketone or aldehyde, generally the favored side is this side. So really the reverse arrow should be longer than the forward arrows for a simple ketone or aldehyde, though that's not always the case. Keep in mind the structural factors that stabilize the enol form, the most important general idea being electron delocalization in the enol form.